Today, we're gonna to be answering the question of what is the difference between borderline personality disorder and quiet borderline personality disorder. So stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. And this week, I will be diving into the topic of different types of mental illnesses. So please share these videos because if you struggle with this mental illness or if you just wanna help me spread this message and increase awareness so people can understand what mental illness is like, like go ahead and share these videos on social media so we can educate more and more people and maybe they might be able to help somebody that they know or get help themselves. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about BPD and quiet BPD. So I've made other videos in the past about borderline personality disorder. It's a very interesting disorder because a lot of people who struggle with it, most of them had some kind of childhood trauma. It had something to do with emotional or physical abuse, something like that at a very young age. So the reason why I find it interesting is because for a lot of people, this could have been completely preventable, whether it was the parents or family members, friends, whatever happened when they were a young age. And I think that's a message to all of us, like we as adults, or even if you're a teenager watching this, like we need to be better people because we can cause different types of disorders in other people based on the way we treat them or we neglect them or whatever the case may be. So. In the other videos where I've talked about BPD, I've gone through like the nine major symptoms. I also made a video about five other symptoms about emotional dysregulation. I will link both of those in the info card. So when it comes to quiet borderline personality disorder, like it's different because you might not notice it. You might not notice somebody in your life has this disorder. So a lot of people, when they think of BPD, they think of like this outward, like lashing out, having like tantrums or crying or just these emotional outbursts, or they might be threatening to hurt themselves or even sometimes even commit suicide. Like there's a lot of outward aggression and different things going on with them. For people with uh, quiet borderline, a lot of it is internal. So when we look at these symptoms, we, we can take a, a few of these symptoms and talk about how they're more internalized more than they're pushed outwards. One of the first ones is uh, somebody with BPD, they might lash out and they might play, not play the victim, but they might portray themselves as the victim. Maybe their brain's telling them that they're the victim and they might tell you like, you're the bad guy. You are the problem, you're the bad guy. You're a terrible person. Well, when it comes to quiet borderline, this is internal. This is inward. So they might have these ruminating thoughts that they're the bad person. They're the villain, they're the evil person. They're the ones who are destroying everybody else's lives around them and they just beat themselves up constantly. So rather than lashing out outwardly and attacking you, they're constantly attacking themselves. Next is a big one. And, and this is something that, that really sucks. And it's important to try to recognize signs and symptoms of this because this next one is impulsive behavior. So a lot of people with BPD, they'll have this like outward impulse impulsive behavior. They might go out and party, they might binge drink or uh, have substance abuse, and but it's like very public, everybody knows. Well, people with quiet borderline, they might do this in the shadows without people knowing. So they might have problems with substance abuse and other people don't know about it. They get home from work or a day at school or whatever it is and they're abusing alcohol or other drugs. Or they might have issues with promiscuity and this is something that maybe their friends and family don't know about. They also might have self-harming behavior and they cover it up so you might know not know about it if someone in your life is doing these or they might binge eat and other things that are very impulsive type of behaviors that are really risky and they're harming themselves not only physically but also their mind and then next when we think about people with bpd we think about like these these intense emotions right and some of it is like very intense anger well this anger again rather than lashing out it might be inward so kind of going back to the first one it's a lot of beating yourselves up and being angry at yourself and then this can lead into some of those other impulsive behaviors 
behaviors. Like some people, when they have a lot of inward anger, they do things to punish themselves. This could involve substances, this could involve binge eating, this can involve self-harm, all these other things. So it's important to kind of recognize if you might be struggling with this stuff, it's important to kind of identify these symptoms, okay? Because you might be struggling with borderline. So there's a lot of people who get diagnosed with borderline, but like it takes a long time because it's quiet. Now, the last thing I wanna say, and I meant to say this at the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna say it in all my videos this week, like I'm not a therapist and chances are, if you're watching this, you're not a therapist either, okay? So please, 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 if you feel like you struggle with any of these symptoms, like let me say this, you should never, ever, ever, ever self-diagnose yourself with any of these things. I use these videos as kind of a way to just give you an idea, and if you're like, that sounds familiar, that sounds familiar, that sounds familiar. Go see your doctor or some kind of mental health professional, all right? So I recommend seeing a doctor or your therapist or your psychiatrist and work with them and say, hey, I think I might be struggling with this, but like when you're doing that, when you're talking to a doctor or psychiatrist, I never latch on to a specific diagnosis. Like I work at a mental health treatment center and I see some people like latch onto something and it's like, no, you don't really meet that criteria. You know what I mean? So it's important to kind of work with them. Like it's a team effort and then you can get down to the bottom of it and then find the right treatment. And like one of the best treatments for BPD is dialectical behavioral therapy, okay? It uses a lot of mindfulness practices, whether it's meditation or it's writing, different ways to kind of acknowledge what's happening in the present moment and working through these difficult emotions. So if you would like to work with a therapist online in an affordable way, uh, BetterHelp Online Therapy actually helps support this channel. So if you check down in the description below, or I'll be leaving it in the comments all this week, like go ahead and sign up. They have a sliding scale. So if you're like me and you're broke, like it is much cheaper. My girlfriend uses it and her therapist is absolutely amazing. So I recommend like you might as well just click on the link, do the little questionnaire. They match you up with a therapist. Just check it out. If it's out of your budget that's cool like at least go see your family doctor all right but anyways if any of you out there struggle with quiet BPD or were diagnosed with quiet BPD, I would love to hear your experience down below. And like, I just want everybody to remember whether you're struggling with it or you're kind of overcoming it, like there are many, 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 many people who have overcome borderline personality disorder, okay? If you experience five or less of the nine symptoms, you have recovered from borderline personality disorder. So it is possible, all right? So again, please share this video, share all these videos this week. Let's try to increase some awareness and help people understand different types of mental illnesses, all right? But that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I am always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Click that little round subscribe button. And a big thank you to everybody supporting the channel on Patreon. If you would like to help me spread a message of hope, go ahead and click and tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so, so much for watching. Get diagnosed, and I'll see you next time.